My Italian connection is through both sets of grandparents. Uh, both sets of grandparents were born in Calabria, in Italy. My father was born in Calabria. Uh, and interestingly enough, my maternal grandparents came out here so long ago that they met and married in Australia. And then my mum was born here as well. So it's kind of very interesting. There's not a lot of Italo-Australians whose mother of my age who were born here. Um, so that's, that's really cool. So growing up Italian-Australian for me was very interesting because it was all about where I fitted in. You know, so on the weekends, we would do very Italian things. We'd go visit the family. We would sometimes make the salami. We'd make the tomato sauce. You know, we'd kill the capretto, you know, and that kind of thing. Sorry for any vegans watching, but you know, that's what we did. And then you go to school on Monday, and you start to have a look around and see all the other kids who weren't Italian, and you would think, oh, I wonder if they had to do the same thing. It was it was constantly trying to grapple with this, who am I? You know, I, I, I've grown up very Italian. I spoke Calabrese, the, the dialect from where my parents come from, before I spoke English, because we grew up with my grandparents who had just arrived. My paternal grandparents arrived in Australia in 1973 and I was born in 1974. So really, essentially, I'm the product of Calabria 1973, because that's what they imposed on me. That's what my family imposed on me in terms of what they had as customs and traditions and the way that they think, did things. And then eventually I'd grow, grow up, go to school, I learned English, and now I'm mixing with the Anglo-Saxons. And so who was I? And that whole struggle went for a very, very long time for me. My passion for comedy actually was born from the idea that I wanted to be a rock star and uh, when, it, when I was in year 12 and, and, and it came to, the, to sort of deciding what I wanted to do, I said to my dad, he said, well, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to be a rock star. And he said, no, there's no rock stars in Calabria, mate. So, so I then had to go and do something else. And so I did food science. And, and, and eventually I got an honours degree in food science. But while I was doing that, while I was studying food science, I thought, mm, you know what, because my dad said, get a degree and do whatever you want. So I got a degree. I was now in, in my honours year. I thought, well, you know, now I can start to pursue, I've, I've made my dad happy. I can start to pursue being a rock star again. But I didn't have a voice. I didn't go to, to lessons to learn how to play the guitar, the piano. So I had this knack for telling jokes and a memory for telling jokes. And I thought, wow, this could be my chance. So I just put myself into to, to comedy uh, so much. I. I, I did rehearsals every, every night that I could. I went to try out nights as much as I could. And all of a sudden it started working and I started getting a following. And that's how I then started to pursue comedy. I thought, right, okay, this is my rock star. This is where I'm gonna become a rock star. I became a rock star of comedy. I've had a great career. I've been very lucky. Uh, I became famous very quickly, very early on in my life. So I would think I had started comedy in 1996 is the first time I ever stepped on stage at the Comedy Store in Crystal Street in uh, Leichhardt. And by the year 2000, I was touring Australia, selling out venues. And by the year 2001, I was touring the world, selling out stadiums. So that was a really quick trajectory from when I first stepped on stage to, to doing that. I think I was 27 and uh, I was you know, selling out three, 4,000 people a night all over the world. So in a nutshell, that's, that's, what, that's what happened. And I've been touring ever since. And you know, I've been able to break into America, into England, and now in South Africa, Belgium, and um, uh, Scotland, uh, Ireland, other countries as well. So that's been really, really good. So in a nutshell, that's, that's basically what happened. And it's, it's, it's a much longer story, but yeah, that's, that's, what, that's what went on. Probably two things really stood out was, the first one was that I um, had a number one album in Canada. Uh, well, actually then went to North America uh, for 18 months. So my, my comedy album was 18 months number one in the North American HMV comedy charts. And then my second album 
got released and it went to number three. I'm the only Australian artist ever, whether it be comedy or music, to have two albums charting simultaneously in the top five anywhere in the world at the same time. So no other artist has ever been able to do that. So I'm very proud of that. Probably the biggest thing that I've done uh, and that I'm most proud of, and I've always said, oh, if I ever won an Oscar or if I won an Emmy, whatever. There's no other accolade that would ever beat this for me, and that was the chance to take my grandparents while they were alive on tour with me to Canada. So one grandmother, she didn't want to come, she was scared of flying, but both my grandfathers and my grandmother all came to Canada and they toured around for two weeks with me and we got them on stage at the end of the show. And, and, and for them, can you imagine, they came from a little village in Calabria to Australia, never been back, and then all of a sudden you take them to another part of the world and they see their grandson performing in front of three or 4,000 people a night limousines, news cameras, paparazzi. Uh, we do store signings, there'd be five, 600 people lining up to meet them as well as me, but to meet them. So that for me was my proudest moment, I have to say, by far. I see myself more performing one man shows, but still collaborating with my other friends. I do a lot of work with other comedians, which I really enjoy, um, as, well as, as well as performing my one man show. I'm expanding my market into territories where I haven't really been before, so I'm really excited about that. And also, um, the American market has also blown out again for me. So it did really well back in you know in the mid 2000s, and then it sort of died down a bit because I didn't tour there a lot because I was too busy touring Australia and Canada. But now, because of social media, my fame has increased again. Back. In, in the United States with another group of Italians. And so I'll be spending a lot of time doing that. And uh, I'm also enjoying being a family man, being a dad. So that's, you know, and I've um, got another child on the way, so I'm really, really excited about that, being a dad. You know, I'm very fortunate that I can spend that time, a lot of time doing that. So that, that's actually really exciting for me. What makes me feel Italian is family more than anything, because that's really where I got to, got my roots. That's really where it all happened. It all comes back to family. Doesn't matter where you go, you know, I can go away, do shows, I come back, but it's at that Christmas and it's Easter and our birthdays and when we get together for anniversaries and so on, where we are together as a family, that's where it all began, and that's where I've come down to more than anything else. Yes, Italian culture, you know, we, we, we're known for our food, for our fashion, for our cars, and uh, I love to eat. I like nice cars, and I like to wear nice things, but really take all those sort of material things away, and it comes down to family. I keep the Italian connection alive by being very much in touch with the new generation of, of Italian, well, not Italians, but the, ch the children of Italians that were born here. See, a lot of people think that, oh, I've only, you know, a lot, I've only got older people who are fans. There's a lot of young kids who are growing up who are fans now. I've been doing this for 25 years almost, and there are children who weren't even born when I started who now are really getting into it. And that's, you know, 13-year-olds, 15-year-olds, 9-year-olds. And, they and the parents are bringing them to the show because they still have their nonni alive. So there's a connection there. And so through them, it makes me keep on wanting to do what I do and teaching them through the comedy about being Italian. So that's how I keep it alive. I also try and keep my Italian connection alive by going to Italy frequently. Uh, last year, believe it or not, I took my mum. My mum had never been to Italy. So the mum in my show is not my mum. The mum in my show is my aunties, my dad's sisters, because my mum being born here, she never had that accent. You know, so you know, that's, a, that's a secret, which I've really never told anyone. So you've got the exclusive on that. Um, but last year I took my mum back to Italy, to Calabria for the first time. And that was really interesting. But I went with my dad too, obviously my mum and my dad. And we went back to the village, to his village. And it was one of the most amazing things to see my dad walking around where he grew up 
telling us the stories. Because I remember my dad would tell us the story that, you know, um, when I didn't want to catch the bus to go to school, he'd be like, you know, we, know, we didn't have a bus, you know. I used to walk 40 kilometres to get it to school every day, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I actually got him in the village and I said, so dad, so that's your house here, there. Yeah, where was your school? He goes, oh, just up, up there. I go, so where's the 40 kilometres, mate? Where, where, where is the 40 kilometres that you told me that you used to walk? And that was just fantastic. I really, really enjoyed it. I got a lot out of that trip. Buonasera, salute.